Alright, today at Memory Lane, we're going to be taking a look at the Atari 2600. And this is the Atari 2600 Junior right here. I have uh, the 7800 and the 2600, but we're going to be showing off the 2600 Junior right here for this video. We've got the controller right here, and let's get ready to play some good, some bad, and some average games on the Atari 2600. And uh, let's take a look at what we have here. That Atari 2600 controller can only mean one thing. We'll be playing the Atari 2600. Today, we'll be using the Atari 7800, fully backwards compatible with the 2600. The Atari 7800 was released in 1986. The original 2600 was released back in 1977. The Atari 2600 and 7800 combined sold over 30 million consoles. The Atari 7800 featured a 1.79 MHz CPU, 4 kilobytes of RAM, and the Atari 7800 uses the same two-channel audio chip found inside the Atari 2600. What a great console! Alright, so before we begin the video, let's uh, take a look at the, uh, the star rating system for memory lane. And before we even begin, uh, just so you guys know, you're going to be rating the videos also down below. So if you having a disagreement on how I rated a game, then I want you to rate the game down below how you want to rate it. It's just not only me rating the game, it's you rating the games also. We're going to take a look at not just one game, but a series of games. Memory lane rating system loading. One star rating equals horrible, real bad, trash. Two star rating equals fair, good Randall. Worth playing once. 3 star rating equals great. Must own. Possible hidden gem. Alright, so we got our controller ready. We got the games ready right here. We're going to be playing a bunch of Atari games. Alright. So the first Atari game on the list right here, we got Adventure for the Atari 2600. Oh yeah, on the uh, adventure label art right here, as you can see, we have a dragon, a castle. We have a little guy right there that's trying to fight the dragon. And you can see it's actually pretty nice looking label art. So it looks pretty promising. So uh, let's head over to the actual game itself and let's see if it's good. Alright, here we have adventure. You have to go around, find keys, try to get through the doors. And you know, grab your rules, and you can see right here, this game is a classic on the Atari 2600. It's a maze-style game. You have to try to make your way around. And oh my god, what the hell is that? It's like a dragon. An Atari 2600 dragon. Try not to get killed. Grab that key. And uh, it's very, very suspenseful. You have to try to make it all the way around. Oh my god, what the hell is that? It's another dragon. You can see that this game gets a three star. This game is awesome. All right, next on the list, we have Combat for the Atari 2600. And you can see here, I have many different versions of Combat. There's, neither one of them are exactly the same. This one has a weird spine label that has a zero one at the end. Now they have all different fonts at the end of the spine labels. Combat is weird. As far as the cartridges go, there's so many different copies of Combat. And uh, Combat is a great game. It will definitely get three stars in my opinion. So let's take a look at combat. All right, let's take a look at the label art on combat. And you see on combat, the label art on this cartridge right here, very, very busy. You have a huge combat going on. It looks like World War III. I mean, look at this. You have planes, tanks, all kinds of crazy stuff going on. It looks pretty awesome. You can tell that it's hand-drawn. Very, very classic artwork on the Atari 2600. And of course, the gameplay on combat is classic, especially if you're playing two players. You play as a tank, and as you can see here, there's many different maps you can choose from, different levels, different difficulties, and uh, this game is fun. You can go around and driving as a tank, you can take the other tank out, and uh, it's top-down view. And uh, 2600 actually had some actual 3D-looking tank games, uh, but this was actually, I believe, the first game on the 2600, if I'm not mistaken, and you can also fly planes right here, as you can see, have a dogfight. And now this game gets a three star. It's classic. It's awesome. It's a great two player game. 
All right, the next game that we're gonna be showing off here is fast food for the Atari 2600 fast food. Uh, let's check this game out. And here we have the fast food label art right there. You got the fast food neon looking logo right there on the very top. You have a big huge pair of lips. You got a hot dog, hamburger, fry, it looks like french fries, pizza, all kinds of stuff right here. Ew, makes me hungry, look at this. And I got the uh, Telesis logo right there on the bottom. Uh, pretty crazy looking label art. Let's check the game out. And here we have fast food, the gameplay. And you can see you're basically a mouth and you're trying to eat as much as possible. Look at this. Oh my god, look, he's eating everything. It's pretty crazy looking. And you can see the uh, Telesis logo on the bottom, the 1982 copyright. Now it looks like you just ate a Dorito right there and you're getting fatter. You can get definitely big and fat in this game. This game is actually, uh, even though it looks stupid, it's actually pretty fun. This game gets a three star rating. It's fun and it makes sense, I guess. The more you eat, the fatter you get. You caught me playing the Atari 2600, oh boy. So the next game that we're gonna be uh, checking out here is Frogger for the uh, Atari 2600. Frogger is a classic. Uh, check this out. And here we have the Frogger label art for the Atari 2600. And you can tell that it's a uh, Parker Brother cartridge, just by the way it looks. And you have the uh, frog right there on the label. He's very, very scared, about ready to have his balls chopped off by a alligator. Or perhaps a crocodile, I'm not sure. But he looks really, really scared. Let's take a look at the game. Alright, here we are playing Frogger for the Atari 2600. It's a classic. I'm pretty sure all you guys played this before. And the concept of this game is you have to hop across the road. Then eventually make it across the pond, or the river right there. And uh, try not to die. As you can see right here, we're trying to make it to the very end where the little small openings are at the end and the top. Now this game is definitely a classic arcade game on the 2600. Three stars! The next game that we're going to be playing on the Atari 2600 is Pitfall. Great Activision game. Let's go check this out. And as you can see here, before we check this out, we're, going, we're showing off the good games first. And we're going to make our way down to the not so good stuff. You'll see that later on in the video. Alright, here's the uh, Activision Pitfall label art. It's your typical Activision label art right here. With a little uh, screen capture right there in the center. Now, if you scored more than 20,000 points or higher, you did have the chance of winning an Activision patch back in the day. And here's how it looked. It looks pretty awesome. Let's check out Pitfall. Now, Pitfall is probably the most popular Atari 2600 game of all time. Anyone that has played the Atari 2600 has seen this game once or twice. Uh, basically, you run around. It's an adventure game. You try to collect the objects, try to score the highest score possible. And, you know, potentially you might get that Activision patch. Now, this game definitely gets three stars. This game is fun. It's fun to explore, and it's fun to swing on the rope and all that stuff. Try not to die. So, you know, you can definitely get bit by uh, alligators and crocodiles, all that stuff. Uh, there's all, Oh, here they are right here. Oh, no. Alright, the next game that we're going to be showing off is Solaris for the Atari 2600. Check this game out, it could be a hidden gem, who knows. This game looks like it's going to be pretty cool. So here we have the Solaris label art, and it looks like we're flying through space. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but you can see that we're definitely blowing things up. Now that is actually pretty cool. Uh, the, the label art on this cartridge is black and white. It's one of the later Atari 2600 labels. Uh, let's take a look at the game, Solaris. Alright, here's the actual gameplay for Solaris. And you see that it's a, it's a shooter and it has like some pretty cool depth to it. It's like you're flying through space right here. You have to try to avoid hitting these plants. You have a little map right here. Where you can actually navigate to various different places. And uh, it's very, very fast paced. And uh, definitely the uh, Atari 2600 had blast processing long before the Sega Genesis. This game is fun, and it gets three stars. Solaris on the Atari 2600. 
surprise, surprise. The next game on the list right here, this is gonna be our final really, really good game that we're gonna be showing off. It's a uh, Tunnel Runner for the Atari 2600. Nice, uh, what I consider a hidden gem. Let's uh, check this game out. All right, here we have the Tunnel Runner cartridge and Tunnel Runner is big yellow letters. And uh, this game apparently has extra RAM, RAM Plus. Uh, let's see exactly how that works out as we play Tunnel Runner on the Atari 2600. All right, it appears that Tunnel Runner actually has a title screen. Now that's not too common on a 2600 game. And here we have uh, what appears to be a randomized, it looks like a random maze. And look at this, it looks like a dungeon crawler type thing going on here. You're actually looking through a maze, it's like first person shooter view. And look at this, this is insane. You have this chomping face that's trying to kill you. Oh my god, that's scary. I mean, this is pretty crazy to see a first person view game on an Atari 2600 where you're navigating through a maze trying to stay alive. This game definitely gets three stars. I mean, look how awesome it looks. I mean, this is insane. It's definitely way, way advanced for the Atari 2600. Pretty awesome. All right, so those were uh, the good games that were shown off. Now let's make our way down to the average two-star games, the ones that maybe you don't want to own them, but you rented them, and you might have regretted it, you might have enjoyed it, but it was like a one-time thing. You want to play the game once, and that's it. These games might make you want to do it on these, so might it might want to make you like pound your brains in trying to play these games. So let's uh. Let's let's check out the first game right here. The first game is Blueprint on the uh, Atari 2600. Let's uh, check this out. All right, here we have one of those really generic-looking CBS electronic cartridges. It's like gray-looking. We have the yellow Blueprint letters on top, and uh, pretty generic-looking. And I'm not sure exactly 100% uh, what this game is, but we're gonna try it out, and we're gonna see if it's fun or if it's really really bad. Let's check it out. All right, now here we have the uh, gameplay of Blueprint. Now this game is pretty confusing, to say the least. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this game. And I tried to play it several times, and I I, I do actually do own this game. And uh, this game gets a two stars. It would probably be good for a rental. If I dragged my butt all the way to Blockbuster back in the 80s and rented this game Blueprint and brought it back the next day, I would feel okay with that. Uh, it's probably not terrible. I'm pretty sure that some of you may actually give it a three stars. Who knows? What do you guys rate this game? Down below, let me know. All right, the next game on the list right here for the Atari 2600. It's a uh, Kung Fu Master, and uh, you might like it, you might hate it, but for me, it's a two star. Let's uh, let's check this game out. All right, and here we have the uh, Kung Fu Master label art, and uh, you can tell by this the way the label looks. There's not really much to see here. It's black and white. We've got the Fung Kung Fu Master logo right there with the Activision logo on top, and uh, it does appear to be a Data East game also. And let's try out Kung Fu Master. Say hello to Kung Fu Master for the Atari 2600. Kick, punch, yeah. Run around and beat the crap out of people. Uh, look at this. It kind of looks like Kung Fu on the NES, but it, it, it definitely feels more cheaper in the sense that the enemies uh, easily defeat you. I'm not sure what's going on here. Like, the hit detection is not so good. Uh, but this, this would have been a great rental back in the day. Just rent it and then return it back. It's, it looks much better than what it is. It gets a well-deserved two-star. All right, the final two-star game on today's episode is uh, Sky Skipper for the Atari 2600. And I love my 2600 Junior, as you can see here. This is probably my one of my favorite consoles of all time. I love like, I love how portable it is. It's a little off topic. I have a ADHD right here, so. Anyway. All right, Sky Skipper. So let's check this game out. Two stars. And here we have the label art for Sky Skipper. And uh, it's nice Parker Brothers looking label art. And we got the uh, the old fashioned airplane. It looks like there's a little monkey on the trying to grab onto the airplane. And we have looks like a rabbit and a frog instead of like a little net right there. Uh, interesting. Let's go try out Sky Skipper for the Atari 2600. All right, here we have the gameplay for Sky Skipper. 
And uh, this game you have to like fly around in a little plane, you have to collect different objects, different animals. I guess you have to try to save them. And, and I would probably say that this is probably, even though it's two stars, I, I would, if I could give it two and a half stars, I would. It's one of the better two star games. You know, it's, it's somewhat fun to play. I, it's not quite three stars. And um, it would would have been an excellent rental back in the day. Uh, what an interesting game this is. Sky Skipper on the Atari 2600. Not bad. We have one more game left. This is the one star game right here. This game will make you really, really want bang your head against the wall, take your 2600 and smash yourself in the head with it. Yeah, this game is bad. Really, really bad. Let's let's check out this game. It's called Disaster. All right, and here we have the label art for Disaster. And you pretty much get the idea. In this game, you have to prevent breaking glass plates. I guess you have to keep spinning them and you have to keep balancing them properly and you just don't want to drop them on the ground and break them. And uh, wait till you see this game. It's uh, not so good. And ladies and gentlemen, I present Disaster. A complete disaster. <laughs> it's a pretty bad game for the Atari 26th century. You have to spin plates and you have to like, you know, keep them balanced, I guess. And that's how you maintain a score. You can see the plates trying to fall right there. It's not a good game at all. You have to keep running back and forth. And I mean, who in their right mind would even think this is fun? It's not fun. It's just a disaster. And yeah, one star. Well deserved. All right, down below, I want you to list your ratings for these games. And I want to see exactly which games you like and which ones you don't like. Uh, this is basically my opinion on these games. The ones I like and the ones I don't like. I like a lot of Atari 2600 games. I think a lot of them are actually really good. Uh, there is a few of them that are really, really bad. Like the one you, you just saw a second ago. That was really, really bad. We're going to be checking out the good, the bad, the ugly here on Memory Lane. And uh, stay tuned because there's going to be a lot more to come.